Hey everybody, welcome back to RPO Restorations and part two of our full-on step-by-step Rochester electronic quadrajet and dual jet adjustment series. If you have one of these carburetors on your car, you've never been able to get it to run quite right, this is definitely the video series for you, so stay tuned. Also, if you haven't seen part one, check out the link at the top because these things need to be done in order. All right, so in part one, we adjusted our throttle position sensor voltage and our mixture control solenoid. In part two, we're going to adjust the idle screws and the idle air bleed valve. So stay tuned. Let's get started. Okay, a couple of tools we're going to need to do this job right. We're going to need a dwell meter. And when we use it, we're going to be keeping an eye on the six cylinder scale. We're also going to need two of our flexible carburetor adjustment tools with the D bit. We're also going to need something to plug the hose that goes from the carburetor to the vapor canister here on the side of the car. We're going to pop our air cleaner back on and get all that set up. Okay, I've got the charcoal canister plugged up, the air cleaner back on. Got my tools already in position on the idle mixture adjustment screws, and we've got that dwell meter hooked up. Now, just a little quick tip if you don't know how far in or out these mixture adjustment screws are because you've never worked on this particular carburetor or it's freshly rebuilt i'd advise getting things back to the initial service position which is to turn the screws in till they lightly and i mean very lightly seat and then screw each one out three full turns then you've kind of got it back to a baseline and you're ready to go all right, so next we're going to get the car warmed up to normal operating temperature and get started. Okay, guys, we've got our car up to normal operating temperature. So we're operating in closed loop with the ECM. Now I'm going to try and zoom in on the dwell meter here. So you can see, see the dwell meter starting to vary. You can see the needles just moving a little bit back and forth as the mixture control solenoid adjusts our fuel air mixture. Now, the scale that we're looking for runs from zero to 60 on the bottom part of this meter. That's the six cylinder scale. Our goal is to get that needle to kind of vary right in the middle over the 30. That means it's operating not too lean and not too rich, right in the middle, just where we want it to be. But our goal is also to get the smoothest idle possible. So we're gonna get it as close as we can to number 30 with the smoothest idle that we can get. And any little minor adjustment that we have to tweak to get that dwell meter where we want it to be, we're gonna adjust on our next step when we take care of our idle air bleed valve. So as you can see, our dwell was varying about 10 degrees under 30 to about 20. That means that our system's just running a little bit lean. So I'm going to turn these mixture screws counterclockwise, see if we can't get it to move up. Just a little bit at a time. Let it readjust. We're at about 22 now. And we got it at about 26. Now we're a little too high. Let's see if I can't zoom in and show you that. And the dwell will vary and move. So we're just a little bit above 30. The engine's idling a lot smoother now, but I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, see if we can't smooth that idle out anymore. Everything we adjust, get a little time to catch up. For the smoothest idle we can get, as close to 30 on that 12 meters. Okay. All 
right, so I think I've got it. I got a nice smooth idle. The engine's not jumping around too much. And I'll try and hone in on this dwell meter for you. And you can see it's varying right around 30. I've got it as close as I can get it with a nice smooth idle. So in the next step, we'll adjust our idle air bleed valve and then we'll be done. All right, guys, before we adjust that idle air bleed valve, just remember, if you like what you see, make sure you hit that like button. If you want to follow along for more tips and tricks, make sure you hit that subscribe button. All right, let's adjust that idle air bleed valve and finish this up. Okay, the idle air bleed valve is located right here on the top of the carburetor. How do you adjust it? You guess right, with a simple flathead screwdriver. We're going to use the same technique with our dwell meter to adjust the idle air bleed valve. But before we do that, we're gonna use our gauging tool to make sure we have it at the factory preset position. All right, we've got our gauging tool in there. I'll include a link up top to the tool video where I feature this item. Uh, if you don't own a gauging tool, the best advice I can give you, and the best I can figure it is, turn your idle air bleed valve all the way in until it lightly bottoms out and then back it out seven full turns that will get you close so now i've got my gauging tool in there <clears throat> and it's just contacting the top of the idle air bleed valve which is exactly where we want it so now we're going to start the car check the dwell and see if there's any adjustments we need to make all right guys our idle air bleed valve was spot on uh, no need to adjust it any further using the method that I taught. All right, guys, after checking our idle air bleed valve with the gauging tool, we're turning it all the way in and then backing it out about seven points. We've still got a nice smooth, smooth idle, excuse me, at that 30 degrees or so as well. So that's it. We're done. If you follow along with all the steps, you now have a perfectly running electronic quadrajet jet carburetor with a nice smooth idle. All right, all that's left is to remove our tools. Don't forget to reconnect your canister purge hose that goes to your carburetor that we plugged up back in step one. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one.